Here we are. What I've been doing to this lately. Well, you can tell what I have been doing is wearing down the tyres a lot. As you can see, this back one's almost bald. Not much tread left on that. Getting a bit shiny in places, as you can see. But still, good for it. So, what I've done is I've changed it. Oh, and I'm going to fall down. Put that behind it. There you go. Right, so I bought a short course shell. So there you are, a little short course shell. I'll go over. I need to change the back body post, but just to give you an idea of kind of what it looks like. Obviously, it'll be a lot lower once this rear tail has been changed. <coughs> Speaking of rear tails, over there. Also, put the Truggy rear shock tower and wing, so that'll mount on there. <coughs> As you can see, the difference in position at the moment. That one will mount about there. So, a bit of a change in the height of the actual post, bringing the body right down, giving it a nice little wing as well. So, done then. Also got some bumpers somewhere, I'll get an effect them in a sec. But yeah. What I did was this connector here obviously doesn't fit most battery shorts. So I made myself a little adapter. The adapter was made from one of the JST connections, the mini ones. Uh, same as you use on a buggy. So, the same as that lead, as you can see, it all plugs straight into that when you get it around the right way, bingo. So, good lead connections don't really come off, and why you use them in a buggy. So, those are what then go onto my new LiPo's. The LiPo I bought, uh, Turnergy Nanotech. 300 milliamp hours, 2S, 35 to 70C discharge, um, 7.4 volts, a little balance connector, very important because these don't have a light bow cut off. So, what I also bought off Fleabay, eBay, whatever you want to call it, is a LiPo voltage checker and LiPo alarm. Uh, this will probably start alarming if I put it in here because I've used this battery today. Let's right, get it the right way around. And there you go. It tells you all voltage. And number 2 is below 3.3, which I've set it up. Now, you can hear, very loud. <laughs> but yeah, you can also set the voltage to whatever you want. Between 2.7 all the way up to 3.8. There you go. So it's number one 3.34, it will be like 3.8 then. So I'll set that back to three So you get the idea. That is very loud. You will hear that when your vehicle is miles away, trust me. And when it goes off, when you're in your vehicle and you're bombing it down the road, you get the Doppler effect. I'll show you how in a minute. Quite funny. So I've got two S batteries. So two S makes it about 20 miles an hour. Quite good. But I've also bought myself some little three S batteries as well. So we've got Turn G Nanotech. 180 milliamp hours, 2C, uh, 3S, 25 to 40C discharge, 11.1 volts. So this one should be charged. It's a good way of testing your batteries as well. 
So I had 12.4, number 1 is 4.11, number 2 is 4.12, number 3 is 4.15. The low, the high, the difference between them all, and the full voltage again. So, good way of checking your batteries. And that will work for up to ASS. As it says on the back, if that will focus. I can hold it small enough and steady enough. Doesn't really make much sense that what it says on the back, but it does tell you. Just push the button and then I'll sort it out. So yeah, to do this then, I've had to actually modify the chassis. So before there was a little bar in between here, which I've chopped out so that the balance plug will fit inside there, like so giving me a bit more room in there when I've got the other one in when this is in. It doesn't really take up too much room when it's in but with the balance wires and all that but yeah, good fit anyway about the biggest 3S you can get for these you can probably get other brands but that was very cheap so I'll stick with that so yeah, basically what happens is I'll plug in the actual thing there this comes up out the top that connects to that. That will bring out the side of the chassis so when the chassis is on you can change it. But I've had to take it back apart again because I've got a bit of gravel stuck in my motor. But it's alright now. It's all good. But yeah, running these things in gravel, dirt with small stones, it's bound to get in here and it just sits somewhere down here and jams it up. So. Metal gear and a better one of them, it might be better off. You can cut it, catch that in the lock. There you go. It's already had a bit of abuse, but it's still going, so I'm quite impressed. Nearly worn out the back tyres, anyway. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing to get them through. So, on the top of the shell, it's a bit mucky because I haven't quite cleaned all this yet. But, um, what I've had to do is I had to cut a bit more out from a servo because I had to replace it with a three wire servo. But I thought I'm going to upgrade it, got a different servo, then realised that the actual JR servo saver that I bought is a wider diameter for the top of the servo, the sort of servo one. So that would work on the JR servo, but not on the one which I bought. Which is uh, Emacs and then whatever that is. And should just about be able to read the talk on that thing. What it focuses. There you go, so anyway. It's got four point eight to six volts, it's one point six to two kilograms a force per centimetre and it's 22.4 to 28 ounce inches and it's a 0.12 or a 0.1 second to 60 degrees speed so it's quite a quick little servo and I've just got one of the horns off it I screwed a screw in the back screwed that in and put a bit of metal in there and that's my servo saver all that really needs to do is locate into there but when it's actually in the vehicle it sits a bit high, so I had to chop these out to get it in. About there. Didn't need to chop as much out, but obviously I didn't know what I was quite doing. That needs to be about that big to get the actual balance plug through. So, you need to get the big end of it through. So, as you can see, it's just about wide enough to get it through, which is wide enough to get the 3S through. So, where's the 3S? As you can see, even the, other, the female part of that will fit through quite nicely. So yeah, that's what I've done. Then your 3 wire servo. I've curled up the wire a little bit so it's a bit neater when it comes round. And it will plug in to the board just in there. So if you've been wondering what that holds for, it's for your 3 wire servo. And then the three wire servo will be connected onto these three pins here. So those three pins 
good idea. Works a lot better without the servo saver on. What I've also done is, can't quite see it, but on the inside of here, down here, I'll get something a bit tight to pull in. Right in here, what I've actually done is chop some of this arm out so that when it turns back, it'll actually sit up against the hub a bit tighter. Just give me that slight bit tighter turning radius. Before it was to about there, now it's to about there. It's a vast improvement anyway for just chopping out a little bit of plastic. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing at the moment. So now, after I've cleaned it all out, time to reassemble. Disassemble number five. Reassemble number five. Micro T. So yeah, I've also bought a little truggy body shell as well. Got a little truggy there. You have to imagine the poster on the back, but as you can see, quite nice. Once it's all down, it will just about fit in. That thing will just fit in there where I've got it. I'll strap it on with some elastic bands at the moment. But I've got some Velcro and it permanent. I've also bought some short course bumpers for it. Uh, <clears throat> them are all the decals that you get with it. So, some decent decals. I might cut out some of the red on it. Not too sure yet. So I'm probably going to not paint it red. More blue, silver and orange. Something like that. I think it's going to be the theme for the day. So yeah. Cool then. That's the original. Oh, another cool mod I've seen on a video on YouTube. I can't remember who it was. But Aerial Saver. Makes a good sound as well. But yeah. Um, basically. Your area will sit inside there, up through there, and it will stop it bending so much it will snap your area. So that bit will bend, that bit will bend, and that will protect your area when it's inside. So as you just feed your area up through there, pops out the top, pops a good one. If you crash and you bend that bit, you're not going to actually bend and snap and rip your area off. That's going to protect it. So, it's definitely a damn good thing to put on. So, thanks for that tip, whoever it was. I'll try and put you in the comments so people can watch it. I don't want to get credit for it. I just want to show you what we've done with it. So, there you go. I've also bought some of these off of eBay. Micro drifts. So, you've got carpet ones and then you've got hard plastic ones as well. I think you just put them over and then heat them up and they stick to the actual wheel. So when these are bald, I may use these as drift wheels. I'll strip the front two out, but I've kind of stuck them back on with glue gun. It kind of works, but then the cotton doesn't. So but it's good fun. Bought some truggy wheels as well. So swap them out. I'll look at the difference in size next to each other. there's a bit of a difference so as you can tell we've got a vast difference there in actual wheel size a lot bigger and a lot lot wider there's a lot more tread on them as well <laughs> so yeah it just might help the vehicle ride that slight bit higher and hopefully out with grip off-road but as you've seen before it's not really very good off-road in loose stuff because it gets straight in there hard dirt pack you're alright but loose stuff not good so yeah get some of them I might dye these I don't know how well they'll dye they feel like the same sort of plastic as some buggy wheels so that should be alright so yeah this is my project I've got some short course front and back bumpers that I can fit on as well um, apart from that, that's about it. I need to fill up these shocks as well. Because they're, they're not very good, really. I did hire it, and I also put these on the innermost one to give it that bit more droop, so that just that bit higher off the actual road. But yeah, handles quite well. Uh, traction rolls quite a lot at this height, so it might need to go a bit lower. 
probably still not that high, but just just that with them. But yeah, very happy with it running on 2S and 3S. Um, makes what's kind of like a kid's toy truck running at 12 mile an hour. Quite fun, but as soon as the battery's halfway down, it can't get up a ramp and stuff. On this, you're struggling to control it on quarter throttle on 2S and probably about an eighth throttle on 3S. So you've got all the power in the world to jump as far as you want. Like it's to scale, it goes. I worked it out. If it's doing 29 mile an hour on a 3S, that's about 750 mile an hour scale speed. Being a 124 scale, so it's pretty much doing Mach 1 at scale speed if the air was 24 times as dense. But yeah, I'll stop talking rubbish now. Let's get back to the main subject putting this back together. So, oh, another thing I also did, which I don't know whether I've got in here at the moment. Ah, it's in here. So I made this, which is just a little guard which basically sits in along that side there to try and protect this part here from all the dust coming in through the servo hole it doesn't work too bad uh, got a bit of stuff in there but yeah it's a good little addition to do to try and stop the stuff coming back Possibly put one back here as well behind the server trying to stop stuff getting in there But it can still also come through there and rattle through the battery case and everything so Whether I put a bit of net on it or some woman's tights or something like that just to Seal it off, stop the stones getting in Dust not a problem, just small stones and these size pinions are not good <laughs> Just stops it working straight away so yeah, that, those are the horns that I got with it, so I experimented a little. As you can see, them are the bits I chopped off. The other one, uh, to make that servo saver. Also, to make the servo horn, as it hasn't got a saver on it. I also did buy, as a replacement, in case this one breaks at some point, one of the low C3 wire servos. But these aren't as powerful, not at all. I don't know if it's actually got any specs on it. No, just a lot number. But yeah, that does have the survey saver on, so you can see what I was trying to attain by doing that. But that has got a hexagonal thing on the bottom. I don't know whether this one has, but the other one has. Um, obviously that won't fit on the other servo. But that servo, far superior, in my view. I haven't actually tried this one out of the packet, but if it's anything like the old servo, then I'd much prefer this one. Loads of torque, loads more precision without the servo saver on. This will bend slightly at the end, so that's all good. Not a problem, and it does bend up slightly. That's actually the plastic bit off a WD-40 bottle. So, yeah. So, I think we might leave that for this part of the video now and put up to the video I'll be putting it back together so yeah enjoy <laughs>